but hey, uh, in my recent comments on some of the videos, uh, people are wanting more Astro Van content. I also got a message on Facebook Messenger, a uh, guy, uh, I like the guy, he's a good guy, a friend of mine, I used to ride bicycles with him and this group of guys that I'm no longer riding with, <laughs> all because of one jerk off. But uh, <laughs> I mentioned this before. It's like <clears throat> I'm that guy. I'll be in a group of people. I'll be having a good time. But one guy. That's all it takes is, is, is one guy that I can't get along with, and I try. But he's a jerk, and so for the betterment of the group, I will pull away from the group because I know how my mind is. I'll, I'll get. I'll be in that mindset of like, dude, I tried to be cool with you. You're being a jerk. So that eventually I'm going to be like, <laughs> anyhow, because I'm crazy. I, uh, he sent me a note because he ran into a guy. I thought it was somebody I knew. And he said, Hey, I ran into one of your people in Morro Bay. So if you're watching this, if you're, you own an Astro van, it looks a lot like mine. It was white. It was lifted. An interesting, it looked like a custom bumper on the back that had a tire carrier. Um, and he said the guy complained a little. He's like, I, I watch his channel. I like his content, but I prefer more Astro Van content. Not so much of him, you know, talk all the stuff I talk about, you know. <laughs> so, this is for you and everybody else that wanted Astro Van content. Today, I'm going to attempt to pull my... Uh, sway bar link links out orient them correctly and replace the bushings and give the chassis an overall look see show you guys that on camera and I think I have to clean out the van it's I just been packing stuff in and out for months I never even really gave it a clean coming back from that desert trip with Wonder Hussy and at the Sa Saline Valley Hot Springs there so I'm not going to go deep dive on the clean, but I got to organize it a bit. And I also have to kind of organize the shop. I, I took a bunch of stuff out of the shop and brought it to Arizona. So I have a little bit more room in there to work. And I have to start setting up to do some uh, shop work, uh, some of which is for the project I'm working on and other things I have to do. But one of the things, this is Astro Van related, is... Uh, I have this kitchen built into my back door, right? Now remember, I have the Dutch doors on the rear on this. And uh, so my lower driver's side door, I took the panel off. On both sides I did that. I cut the metal out and made room for storage in there. But on the driver's side, I built an insert box with a fold down cutting board and all that. And I got a Palin jersey, great guy, Phil. He owns a painting company. If you need painting done uh, and you're at the Jersey Shore, look up uh, Oceanside Painting. You can't get better. Between whole homes, mansions, new home construction, all that stuff, he's the man. And Phil is a real interesting character. He will get passionate about a vehicle and he'll find one and he will rebuild it and just do all kinds of kooky stuff. So he has an Astro van. <clears throat> it's a second gen and he has uh, a, a giant lift on it, a straight front axle. He's running 35 inch tires. It's wild. He's done a couple different builds on the interior. And Phil, you may recall, he sent me a really cool, sorry about all the rattling here. He sent me a really cool bumper, uh, and all he wants in exchange is me to build him one of these kitchen boxes. <clears throat> so, which is probably about the same amount of money if you had to hire me to do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, that bumper he sent me was an aluminum, aluminous bumper that was cut down and redone to fit the rear of the Astro van perfectly. And it has a tire swing away and a storage box swing away with a big, 18 by 18 by 24 inch storage box the whole thing man and he shipped it to me so I owe Phil I've been on 
been on him about it a little bit for a while because I needed him to send me these dimensions and tell me what he wanted, but he had to wait till he got his new interior done so he knew how far this box can protrude into the space, into the rear of the van. <clears throat> he just sent me that. So now I got to get on it and get that done and it's going to, I'll do something real sweet for him, you know, it's going to be super cool, as you would expect. So stay tuned and uh, the next shots you'll see will be me uh, with the van here. Yeah. All right, I got to get that bow off of there. <laughs> I just opened his side door, and I'll tell you, this thing is just... Look, typically my whole kit will fit underneath this deck, right, the bed deck here. And uh, I can usually keep this area pretty nice and sparse and clean, but you can see I've been just throwing stuff in here. And I got to clean all this up. I got to go through all this stuff up here. I picked this thing up for $7, it was great, and then I broke the glass like an idiot, but there's a glass place around the corner for me. It's all metal, so it's worth putting a new piece of glass on for the shop clock. That's a survival shirt there. You know what I think I'll do for you guys is I think I'll set up the tripod and pull stuff out and show you what's in here. You might get a kick out of it and tidy that up, and I'm still going to do the bushings on the uh, bars. Oh. I've got to put my uh, new registration sticker on the plate. My friend Kurgi gave me um, uh, a bunch of her dad's uh, CDs, which is all my kind of music. Uh, so I was listening to that with the CD player the other day on the way back from Arizona. But I ordered this on Amazon. So one of the things I'll show you today is this FM transmitter. I got a new head unit for this vehicle. And it, uh, it's modern, and it's got touch screen, and you can have navigation on it, and I can plug my iPod into it, which is the most important thing. Uh, but I have to buy another harness. It's like a female harness that works for GM that'll work with this radio and the new one, so it becomes plug and play. I basically have to wire that plug into the wiring here, clip it, wire all that in, and then I can just plug and play with the new unit. I've been lazy about... look pulling this apart to find out what I need to buy and then putting the dash back together and ordering it and getting it. But that'll happen. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I, I bought replacement LED bulbs for all the overhead bulbs and everything in the van. So I'll be putting those in. They're in the van here somewhere. Anything I find, I'll show you guys. I still have to finish this van. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's been too busy using it. So hang on, let's get to all this. Let's uh, open up the back. I'll show you what I was talking about here. A lot of you. So I had the hall step. Uh, it, uh, what is it? Harbor Freight sells a pretty cool step here. It's pretty strong, but this is the second one I've broken. I backed up and I hit a telephone pole uh, at the parking lot at the Anna Walt Lumber the other day. It snapped right off. I snapped the first one off out in the desert, uh, Saline Valley. So. That's kind of a bummer. I got to get a steel one. They make one that's wedge shaped. The sort of thing if somebody rammed up into the back of you, it would just take out their radiator and disable their car. So, uh, let's see what we got going on here. A bunch of stuff. Got my uh, gators up here. A little survival backpack thing I, I hike with. When I hike, I've got this thing with me. And I have like a basic setup in here. If the shit hit the fan while I was out in the woods, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. <laughs> if I got the chest rig on, I'm in really good shape. So, uh, you guys might recall I did this. I still want to do a folding table at this level to fold down, leave this exposed. This is my folding chair. Got some long tools in here. Uh, this is my, uh, this is a jump start battery pack, and then this is just some blackout curtains I could kind of haphazardly put up across the windows if I need to. Oh, I found another, I found this in Arizona. This is what's called a post mall. I'll show you one in a minute uh, in, in the shop. I, I make laminated handles for these with a nub on the end, and I have a whole workout routine. You guys may have seen it. If I remember, I'll put a link to that below. Here is this. Let's, uh, let's get this down and show it to you. Well, before I do that, here's the fridge. I can pull this out right here and uh, plug the fridge in while I'm driving. So when I left Arizona the other day, my friend Kurgi came out. She brought me a bunch of food and steaks and everything, which we didn't eat. So I put all that stuff in the fridge, drove home. It was all good. Fridge works great. 
So uh, this is here so that if I was sleeping back here, I could plug the phone in or anything else, run the cord up through here, stick the phone here and lean it up and it's just sitting here when I'm sleeping right next to me. So it's real convenient to have this little shelf here. Now the one I'm gonna do for uh, Phil, all he did was he gave me the box dimensions, the cutout he made for the door. So I don't think I'm gonna make him this big wide panel and everything here because his door is a little bit different than mine. I think I'll just make a little frame piece that he can zip through and mount the same way I did here. I'll be pulling this out when I do it. I think I got, I'll give you guys a video on that. I used a half inch plywood. I don't even remember exactly how I did everything, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and analyze this for you real quick now because I think you'll get a kick out of it. So there's a, a coin here that just rotates into a slot that I cut here to lock this up in place. This is not the perfect way to do it, but for me it didn't matter. I might come up with something better for Phil, but I do think this would be fine for him. I got this uh, pocket knife here that holds uh, some bits. It's always on my person. So I can loosen this a hair. And then this coin will move. And now this will come down. Put this back together. And of course, when I put it back in, I'll tighten everything up and uh, lock it down. There's also a bottle opener here. This is a Kershaw. Uh, Hawk design. There's a name for this that I can't remember, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good knife. Dave turned me on to it. I've got a slot going across here, and that's for this cord. still dusty in here so this just fits underneath here I have magnets you can see I put in here and the idea was to put some plates under here where they correspond uh, so that it would hold itself up I just never got around to that maybe I'll hook that up for uh, Phil anyhow so there we go so now you got your cutting table surface and which is pretty sturdy got my mechanical Turkish uh, coffee grinder in here I got some spices in here. I got some uh, powdered almond butter here. I got some honey in here. Uh, there's stuff missing. And I, actually, look at this. I got stew in here. <laughs> oh, wow. I got ginger in here. I got some cinnamon up in here. I had some vanilla in here I took out. There's some coffee in here. These are the obviously propane tanks. I was using a fuel stove, a gas fuel stove last time. So these are still sitting here. Uh, Phil, if you're watching this, tell me if you want this for these. Because if you don't, I'll just probably put a straight shelf right across here. And this will be easier to get in and out of. Little drip catch here. I thought I don't like these on regular cutting boards at home, but I figured for this it made sense because if I was cutting right here and there's something over here, whatever, you know, I'll just keep it clean. And this was my own, so there's a few little I wouldn't call them mistakes, but things that work out great. Like this cracked on me. I don't think I pre drilled it. Doesn't matter, it's nice and sturdy. Everything's glued and screwed or glued and pinned. I didn't bother filling these nails because they're so tiny. So the idea was is that I inserted the box and then I made these parts and then I, I put them in uh, and I screwed that. I don't remember how exactly I did it, but I did screw the, the box to these panels. Sorry, this. Uh... So you can see a screw here, right? And there's another one up underneath here. You can barely see it. There's probably one inside. I don't know, but uh, that's screwed directly to this half inch piece of wood here. I just trimmed that out with this. And the idea here was maybe like some leather straps, you know, to hold a knife here or maybe a knife in a sheath right here or utensils or something. I just, again, I just haven't gotten around to it. I haven't lived enough out of this since I put that in there. And this is just a thin piece of, of uh, what is that? That's Douglas fir, straight grain, sort of thing you'd make uh, windows out of or doors. And I had that in the shop already. So I just applied that to the front of the box. You see the box is only so deep. 
uh, it does just this top part protrudes. Now he's telling me I can protrude this box up to two and a half inches more into the space. Now I don't think we need that, okay, because that would be just insanely massive. But I'll have to call him before I actually start the project and ask him about that. I'm gonna ask him what he wants to put in there. I've asked him before and he just doesn't know yet. He's like, just build exactly what you have, I'll be fine. But I could do better. This one was more complicated because, I mean, his door's gotta have a curve to it as well, I would imagine. But I had to stop it here. So I had to come up with a way to mill a thin piece here and uh, make this uh, retaining strip at the top work with it, just like on the factory panel. So I duplicated those dimensions and I've got this on here. I'd like to give him a sill. Uh, good thing is, is because I can come out so far in his, um, I can mount a sill to the top of that. He just might have to do some fitting uh, on his own with that. I might have to give him this piece separate from the box. I might have to send him a kit that he has to do some assembling with as he installs it. And I think on the sides, like I said, his he didn't give me all the dimensions. He didn't give me the dimension from here to the edge of his door or anything. So I think what I'll do is I'll just give him like an inch and a half or so trim strip around that he could just put it in. And because he has so much depth he can play with, he can put some sort of panel on his door all the way around it insert this and over the top of whatever he puts on his door and then that'll just be like a nice framework that he can then screw right through and he'll be golden that'll probably make sense so uh, that's enough of this it's not what this video is necessarily about but yeah, just, uh, one other thing i pointed this out before but you'll see here this is straight across so i was able to put this rail on here um, so that i mean you have to have a straight line with your hinges this is all made out of scrap, by the way. That's why it's all mixed match parts. One of the issues I see when people put them on a panel is that you can, you should be able to see this here, but this panel has a curve to it because it's bending to the curve of the door. If you put hinges directly on this piece of wood and then try to do a fold down, your hinges bind because it's not a straight line. So the way you want to do it is even though I didn't need to do it here, it's the same exact system. What I would do is I'd take a piece of wood and I'd scribe it so I match this curve. All right, it would fit tight up on here with the curve, but the front edge of that piece of wood, so the front edge of that piece of wood would be a nice straight line, and that's where you put the hinges. And I would do it exactly like this, uh, as far as the way this functions, where, you know, this piece that I'd be putting on there, I'm talking to you about be the right thickness at the ends to be the same exact thickness as the top so that we get a nice flush space with these hinges. Should make sense to you. So this one here is gonna come in. Obviously it's not gonna be super long. I don't have it, well, look at that. There's a tape measure right here. Isn't that convenient? So this is 10 and a half inches, you know, plus another three quarters there. So 10 and a half, look at that. I can actually make the same size if I wanted to. And at the top, I was kind of considering, a, you know, not as deep, it doesn't need to be, but probably putting a little shelf here at the top, just a you know, tiny one it has to make sense for me. Maybe have a straight rail across the front of it, I don't know. But basically this same thing, it'll fold right up, it'll cover these two areas, and then it'll fold down and I'll be golden. Like, as I said, this will always be accessible because I won't bring it all the way down so low. That's for me. So I think you guys will dig that. Just as a reminder, what's in here, there's a, it's gonna be a long video even before I get to the bushings. This is my awning and that vestibule that I put outside around this whole hatch, works out great. And this is my uh, Lifesaver jerry can. So this will filter something like 300,000 gallons of water, like horrible water you could dump this into anything and it filters it uh, these are again designed for nato use it's like a 300 dollar item it's uh, worth it with this and the fridge and a way to cook you're golden no ice you don't have to bring water as long as you have a water source you're golden so to me this is survival gear i could be stuck somewhere as long as i could find water I'm safe, 
Uh, I mean, even if I killed an animal that was a little bit larger and I couldn't eat it all in one sitting, I got a fridge. And I got a solar generator in here. And I got solar panels to power the solar generator. So I'm pretty self-sufficient in this vehicle. This is my uh, Astrovan specific toolkit, which I mean, it's got to weigh over 50 pounds because I can curl 50 pounds. So, with one arm, I'm not going to give you a whole thing of this, but I got to get a few things out. So, you might find this interesting. You might, you might, rabbit, you might. I pretty much know what I have in here. I have a pretty good socket set, uh, both half inch and three quarter inch drive. A lot of stuff in here for me to do suspension work. I'm gonna actually pull the tires to do this. I keep what I need to remove my tires right here. And also work my jack. But I have a floor jack in here that I'm gonna use today. So let me get to that. My uh, toolkit for the van encompasses two bags. I've got some cordless tools in here. I'll show you what I got in here. Again, because you might find it interesting. So with this kit here, with all the wrenches and sockets and everything else I need, and screwdrivers and everything a lot are in this tool roll. This is really good just for removing, spinning things out quick. And there's also an 18 inch extension that I have in the closet behind the seat that I use uh, when I'm taking the doghouse off. I don't want to always have to go into that uh, in this bag, which I don't think it would fit in now. But uh, sometimes I just want to get that off real quick. I don't want to dig all this stuff out. So in here, I have uh, an impact driver with an almost fully charged battery. That's enough to get the wheels off. This is it's the Makita uh, XWT17. Um, it's got enough torque to do anything I need with the suspension. So that's important. That, that's what you're going to break when you're on a trail. And I've got a grinder in here and cut off wheels and everything else. So pair of safety goggles, there's always hearing protection in there. So, you know, if I'm on the road somewhere and something kooky happens, or I, I mean, having a cutoff wheel, I, I've watched quite a few people, overlanders, and they, they got a, something's rusted, they can't get off their roof, and they're sitting there forever. It's like, dude, right here, it's all you need. If you're somewhere and you gotta cut a chain or a lock to get past or through something, you know, I'm not endorsing breaking the law, but there are times, right? This just makes quick work, quick, quick work of anything. And I'll also point out, I keep, if I have my kit with me, I got a D-handled compact uh, Makita Black from their subcompact line uh, Sawzall. And they sell these long wood cutting blades. I think they're like a foot or more in length. And that thing, I can cut anything that th that's that big around, I can cut with that pretty easy so I can clear trail and whatnot without needing a chainsaw. Makita sells a chainsaw it's got a 16 inch bar on it that you can take off and put an 18 inch bar on it and it works with two of these batteries and uh, oftentimes it's on it comes with four batteries and a double charger and the chainsaw and you can find them for about $400 on Amazon. I really want one of those. I just can't see spend that money on it at the moment because it's not something I use that regularly, but I see myself getting one uh, if anybody wants to sponsor the channel. No. <laughs> Man, let me keep working. I'm not 100% certain this is going to be a successful video. I got this block of wood. I cut that circle out so it uh, registers on this jack here. Almost forgot to block the rear tires, and I got to get a block of wood out of the van.
it's always in there. nice things about the impact driver is if I wasn't using the impact driver if I was using brute strength I'd want to loosen those bolts the lug nuts before I jack it up you know what I'm gonna get the jack stands out too just to be on the safe side you know better safe than sorry I just figured I'd record that whole thing for you. It's going to be a pretty long video. But for those of you who've been jonesing for the Astro Van content, I suppose you'd be happy. <laughs> the John Belushi. Alright, so this upper bushing is gone. The head of that nut has cut into the washer. I won't be able to get a socket on there. I'm also just inspecting other things as I'm looking around in here. I had to find my uh, readers in the van. The thing about these things, I never needed them until months ago and now I need them all the time and I break them and I lose them and very annoying. Sorry, I had a flashlight around here. Everything's the Makita 18 volt cordless, so everything works the same batteries. I recommend that's what you do. Not necessarily the Makita, but just buy all the same tools. All right, so this is a different system than what I told you guys last time. There is a nut on the bottom of here, and that's what my problem is. I can't lock. I can see it's already stripped. So if I turn that up there, this all turns, and uh, now I have to come up with a different way to solve that problem. All right, let me think this out. I might have to cut this anyhow and just put these new ones on that again are the sleeve is shorter on the new set and now right now it doesn't matter all this is dropped because the vans up in the air normally there'd be weight here this would be much higher this would be rocked up higher but uh, <coughs> excuse me because of the lift um, I keep thinking that maybe it makes more sense to have 
a longer system here. So, oh shit. Let me, let me try to figure this out. I'm not gonna waste your time. If I get it working, you'll see. You'll see momentarily. And if I don't, I'll end the video and then it'll just be me failing for this for the moment. But somebody made a good point and I had thought of this already. Of course, I don't know where I could get a sleeve, but it must exist. Really, all I gotta do is make one. I could probably buy pipe longer than I need and cut it to the length I need and basically get a hardened bolt that's longer and then kind of set this down without the links on and put rotate this down to where it looks correct and then take a measurement of what I need and then cut the sleeve appropriately and build my own set uh, with new bushings, the bushings I have for the set I have now. Maybe that's the way to go. And you know what? That might be a better video. How about we just do that? How does that sound? Maybe I'll make this work temporarily, and if I do, you'll see some more of that. Um, if not, I'll be back here in a moment, uh, and I'll be telling you, yeah, I decided that's what I'm going to do. And that would probably be a good video for all of you that have a lifted Astro van, and you want to get your sway bar link, uh, link set correct. It'll be a way for you to make your own set because I, I do think that there's I don't think it matters that much but I think it matters to a certain extent there's even with the lift this distance from the control arm to the sway bar end probably should be a particular length that should be a proper size but because they only sell them for the stock vehicles. I'm assuming that all the ones for the stock vehicles that we're buying are probably too short for the sway bar to act correctly, like it would in just an unmodified front end on an all-wheel drive Astro van. Does that make sense? Makes sense, right? If it doesn't make sense, somebody's gonna go, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Actually, thank you for that. I, if that's the truth, just let me know. And you could be as kooky and rude and as insulting as you want to be. It's okay. It's not going to bother me. <laughs> but I'll just goof on you on the next video. But uh, right, hang on. Maybe you'll see me again in a moment. Well, sorry this point. This is just not going to happen today. Um, I'm going to have to cut that to get it off. So I think the smart thing to do is... I'll get some dimensions like I said I'll buy a bolt and some pipe to make my own sleeves and then I'll take the parts and I'll make them all work together with a custom set but there's a couple things underneath here I wanted to show you guys that are issues there it's not a big deal I'm aware of both of them and I thought I had one kind of nipped in the bud but it's not so there is I'll try to get some light on this for you you can see up in here, you should be able to see, it's a little bit wet. See a little drip of oil right there on the crankshaft position sensor? And the whole front of that um, timing cover, I have another one in a box. There's a little wetness, and you can see it's been hitting the oil pan, a little bit of blowback. It's not the end of the world. It never registers on the dipstick, so it's not like I'm losing oil, really. It's just slight weep, and when you're driving, it's enough to just for the air to force it back. But in order to get to that, you got to pull the, you know, this balance wheel off and everything else. I actually have a new one of those, so I could put on if I want to. But just to get to that, it's a hassle. And then you'll see here, it's wet right here on the frame. And then you'll see the, uh, that's the, uh, what is that? That's the steering box is wet. And then up higher, up in there. I don't know if I'll be able to show it. Maybe. Oh, there, there it is. You'll see a little cylinder and a shiny spot on it, on the bottom of it, right there. And that is the, uh, what is that? That's, I forget what that's called. That's that unit that uh, is for the power steering and the brake system. Oh, God, I can't remember the name of it. But anyhow, it's... I got to rebuild that. I got a rebuild kit for it. I've been wanting to go to the junkyard and pick one of those up and just rebuild that and just do a swap in an afternoon. So those are two things that really need to happen because they're bothering me. You see the wetness on here. 
So it's n n none of these are the end of the world. I've been driving like this, you know, since I've had the van, since 2017 or 2018. And um, I guess I got to get on that. So three things, three things I got to do. Other than that, as you guys know, this whole thing is everything's been replaced under here. The gears, the axles, the drive shaft. The whole Y pipe, catalytic converters, oxygen sensors, new transmission pan serves. The, this is a replacement transmission. It's the uh, Jasper uh, transmission, but I had that long enough to where I had to service it. Front axle up here has been replaced. Obviously, new gears in here as well. CVs multiple times. I could replace both these CVs in about two hours now. I've done it so many times. Um, but overall, it's looking pretty good under here. Yeah, these are not, those two, three things are not the end of the world. Wish I didn't have to do it, but I guess I'm going to have to. So stay tuned on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was for those of you Jones and for some Astro Van content. <laughs> you got to see it. I didn't do anything. And I, this video is going to be too long, so I'm not going to the badass tilt all tripod. Because everything from Jersey is tough. Um, I was going to go through this. I still will. I'm just not going to shoot video of it. There's no point. I mean, I don't think you guys are going to be all that interested in my junk. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll do videos on every one of these things. And uh, that's it for now. So have a great day. It's probably too dark. I was probably backlit. So have a great day. Thank you for being here. And um, I'll catch you in the next one.